regulation series. The Texas Rangers with a two games to one lead on the Toronto Blue Jays. And a good afternoon, everybody. Kenny Albert along with Harold Reynolds, Tom Perducci, and Ken Rosenthal wishing all of you happy Columbus Day in the United States. Happy Thanksgiving Day in Canada. In the other ALDS, Game 4, Houston Astros with a 6-2 lead on the Kansas City Royals in the seventh inning. Astros looking to advance to the ALCS. Rangers can do the same with a victory today. And the big news just over an hour ago, it was announced that Adrian Beltre, who has not played since the third inning of Game 1 in Toronto, will be in the lineup for the Texas Rangers. Harold, he was not in the original starting lineup, but Beltre is good to go. And what does he mean to this Texas Rangers ball club? Well, he means a lot, you know, not only emotionally, but the fact of the matter is in the middle of that lineup, it has been struggling without him. He's hit third and fourth all year with him, Prince Fielder. And with Beltre now, that gets them back to where they feel comfortable in their lineup and able to affect things. Look, here's how he got hurt. If you weren't watching, to remind you, he jammed his back on that slide right there, took this swing, drove in a run, fought to get down to first base, fought to try to stay in the game. That was the last time we watched him on the field. How is it important and why is it important? Here's what's been in the middle of their order. That's two, three, and four. All these guys have been affected by the fact that Beltre has not been in the lineup. And you can see how it's affected their offense. has not been very good right now. So that's a huge jump start, a huge message for this club. Only five hits the entire game for the Rangers in their game three loss last night, Tom. And today in game four, Texas will face a former Ranger, the 40-year-old knuckleballer R.A. Dickey, who will make his first career postseason start. What a story, R.A. Dickey. No one has waited longer for their postseason start. He turns 41 in two weeks. But it's not just about the length of the journey. It's about how strange this journey has been for R.A. Dickey. Drafted back in 1996 by the Rangers, he got to the big leagues as a conventional pitcher. But in 2005, his manager, Buck Showalter, said, you can't survive with your 87-mile-an-hour fastball. So he changed to a knuckleball pitcher. And ever since then, he has been waiting for this moment to start a postseason game. And now that it's here, can you believe it? It happens right here in Arlington. R.A. Dickey has called it poetic. He has called it a neat narrative. He is a man of words, but today he needs to be a man of the pitch that saved his career, the knuckleball. Well, he'll try and save the Blue Jays' season today. Toronto trails the series two games to one. Game four coming up, the Blue Jays, the American League Eastern Division champs, lost the first last night to stay alive.
11 fall, Ken. Kenny, Adrian Beltre told manager Jeff Bannister he is ready to go. Bannister said he trusts Beltre, that Beltre has earned that trust. And GM John Daniels had perhaps the definitive word saying, what are you going to tell Willis Reed, that he can't go? <laughs> That's a good one. That, of course, referring back to the New York Nick Great and his return to the NBA Finals in 1970. A look at the Rangers defensively around the infield. Moreland, Odor, Andrews, and Beltre at third. Hamilton to Shields, Chu from left to right. The battery of Holland and Chirinos. Four double plays yesterday to keep this game close in consecutive innings, nonetheless. And you wonder if Ben Revere, three bun hits this year, will test the mobility of Adrian Beltre early. Beltre in on the ground to third. First pitch from the 28-year-old left-hander, Derek Holland, missing high and away. Ball one to Revere. And Tom, it's interesting you bring that up. We were talking about that around the batting cage, but at that time, Alberto was playing third base. And he said, I got to test the youngster. Well, now, even more so with Adrian, I think you got to see if he moves. And as a bunter, the where he's positioned, you can drop it right down the line. There it is. He's pulling it with him, though. Where's down the bunt to the right side. Rudolph Van on here on the top of the first for the Blue Jays. Well, there you go. You can go both ways because he's that good of a bunter. And this, this play right here is designed to bunt it right at the second baseman. You've got a left-handed pitcher who falls off to, towards third base. It opens up the whole side. You see Holland, as he delivers, he falls off. So now you've got the whole side of that infield to go ahead and drop the bunt towards second. Fifth hit of the series for Revere. He has at least one in all four games. Josh Donaldson steps in. He'll be followed by Jose Bautista. Edwin Encarnacion in the cleanup spot. Then Chris Colabello, Troy Tulowitzki. Last night's hero bat sixth. Bob of the order, Martin, Pilar, and Goins. Donaldson a home run in game two. Two hits last night. And Kenny, throughout this series, we've talked about the ability of Rangers pitchers to work the ball down and away. Plan B today with Derek Holland is all about establishing inside Marvin Hudson behind the plate. A little bigger zone than Alfonso Marquez had yesterday. The slider and the fastball in on the hands of the right-handed hitters is the key for Derek Holland. Tell you what, you know the fun about being around teams and players in a series. I don't think I've ever met a guy as confident as Donaldson is right now in his ability. And he throws this one to deep right field. Chu looks up. It's gone. A two-run home run off the bat of Josh Donaldson, his second of the series. Blue Jays take an early 2 nothing lead. Tell you, I was around the batting cage, and he was hitting balls to right center, and he was in the group of Ben Revere and a couple of guys. He says, nobody hits the ball opposite field better than I do. Nobody. I can drive it out of the ballpark. Just the confidence that oozes off of this guy when you're around him. Whether he's talking about Auburn football where he went to college or whether he's talking about facing the, today's starter, he's as confident as anybody. We're looking at a club right now, Tom, so on fire. This is the game they play. Really began, jump-started with Tularitsky's three-run homer last night. The home run ball. Bautista takes ball one inside. So after five pitches, the Blue Jays take a 2-0 lead. Donaldson, 41 home runs during the regular season. Third in the American League. Blue Jays hit a major league high, 232. Bautista, 3 for 13 in the series. Just 4 for 20 lifetime against Holland. Well, he missed some balls yesterday. He's a little upset. They continue to pound him in. And he's another guy who likes to sit on that ball inside and spin on it. Throws this one to center. To Shields moving to his left. One away. And it's a pitch off that Donaldson showed off that oppo power. I, he cracked me up today. He walked in the office of John Gibbons. Remember last night, Gibbons, the manager, put a contact play on with a runner on third base and one out. 
It was a double play. It took away in at bat for Donaldson. And he said, Skip, I got 123 Dalmatians. How can you put a contact play on? And I'm thinking, Dalmatians? What the heck is he talking about? RBIs! Once you get to 101, you can call your RBIs Dalmatians. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians. 123. He's had some stakes, no doubt. He has three Dalmatians in this series. Two today. A 1 1 to Encarnacion. Fouled off yeah. to the right side. 1 and 2. For coverage of today's game in Spanish, please tune in to Fox Deportes. The one two from Holland. Two balls, two strikes. Uh, I think one thing this helps this Toronto lineup is playing in their ballpark and playing in the American League East division, particularly with Donaldson. He's realized now out of coming out of that West with those big ballparks, Seattle, Anaheim, Oakland, the ball doesn't carry. A shot to third. And Carnacion is retired. Now you can see right there, Adrian, very ginger. Usually he'll come up and just wing that ball. Watch his actions after he catches it and throws. He's hurting right there. You can tell he's just going to have to gut through this performance today. And he got up in different parts there. That was like unfolding one of those Jays lounge, those lawn chairs he had in the backyard. It took a while to unfold. He almost got undressed by that ball hit down there. Strike one to Colabella. Colabella was like, hey, you got to pronounce my name however way you want to, but my friends want you to pronounce it right. I said, okay, what do you want me to say? Colabella, you know, a little Italian in there. I said, okay, all right, I got you. Deep right field. Jew is back. It is gone. Second home run of the inning. It is now 3 nothing, Toronto. Well, you can see it's 93 degrees and the ball is jumping. And it, it always carries somewhat to right field, but he missed this ball. He looked at it and wondered if it was going to go. And Chu kind of drifted, but it is hot. Nobody the ball is carrying. And that ball is thunder. You can hear Donaldson down there yelling, nobody goes to right better than me, baby. They have a game plan. They're going to take Hall in the opposite way. That's been their plan. Bautista hit one kind of right center. Those two balls right field for Homer. Woo! So two first inning home runs off Derek Collin. First Donaldson of N. Colavello. Kulowitzki at the plate. He hit the three-run shot of the sixth inning. To break the game open last night. Grounds out to the shortstop Andrews. Before the Rangers come to bat, they trail by three. First Donaldson and then the two-out solo shot off the bat of Chris Colavello. Three-nothing Blue Jays in game four.
Roberto De Shields leads off, then Shinsu Chu, followed by Adrian Beltre in his return to the lineup. Fielder Moreland, Andrews, middle of the order, Hamilton, Odor, Chirinos. De Shields takes a call strike. He has six of the 21 Texas Rangers hits in this series. And this is a new experience. He has never faced a knuckleball pitcher before. So how do the Rangers prepare for R.A. Dickey? Down in the batting cage underneath the stands, they have a pitching machine. They set the dial to knuckleballs. On one hop, it's Donaldson. One away. Dickey did not receive much run support over the first half of the season. He was just 3-10 and 10 prior to the All-Star break. But since then, a record of 8-1. and one. He does a great job changing speeds on that knuckleball. He throws one that's really firm, likes to keep that high in the zone. It's all about movement. Well, what's unique about him, Tom? You talked about how he throws it hard. He's going to throw it. Most knuckleball guys are throwing it in the 50s, low 60 mile an hour. He'll get it up there on you occasionally, mid 60, even 70. That's 77 miles an hour right there with that knuckleball. And I hate to say it to Marvin Hudson for his sake because he actually got hit on the hand with that. But that's a good sign for the Jays because not just hard to catch to hit. It's hard to catch. Ball off the glove of Martin. So Hudson behind the plate. The crew chief Dale Scott at first base. Ouch. The knuckleball pitcher wants as little rotation on the baseball as possible. Well, you see Russell Martin's glove right there. It's almost the size of first baseman's glove. That is designed to catch a knuckleball that is moving the way it does. It moves so much that you got to have the extra width on the glove to catch it. Russell Martin started 20 of Dickey's starts this season behind the plate. Josh Tolley not on the postseason roster started the other 13. Russell Martin's got great hands. Been an infielder. That ball, if it's moving and he can't catch it, Tom, you're, you're dead on. That's that's a great sign. It's tough to hit it if you can't even catch it. Yeah, that, that's a catcher's mitt that went on a diet. On the left really side. Really no difference in size, but. Well, a little bit. A little bit. That angle's not really giving us much, but look at the the, the top part of the where the Rawlings was at. Not as much padding in the glove of the, the, the knuckleball. Beltre on deck. The 3 1 to Chu. Beltre to right field for a base hit. We head to Los Angeles for a game break. Check in on the Astros and the Royals with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin. Thinning in Houston. Thanks, Kevin. Adrian Peltre was not in the original starting lineup for the Rangers. We spoke to Jeff Bannister about four hours prior to first pitch. He said Beltre is a little better, not quite ready. Perhaps he would play if it were a night game, but we shall see. And then just over an hour before the start of game four, it was announced that. Beltre would be in the Rangers lineup. Uh, it's a big lift. I'm curious to see after watching that ground ball. He's only got so many movements and, and, and that looks like he's going to be able to have on the day. I want to see him swing in the game mode instead of maybe batting practice when it's more controlled. And I'm, I'm curious to see if right away Jeff Bannister wants to get the running game in motion against the knuckleball pitcher. Now the catcher, Russell Martin, you can't go out and get the baseball like you would a conventional pitcher because of the late movement on the knuckleball. You have to stay back. But well, Ari Dickey is so good at holding runners and so quick to the plate. Still got a challenge. Him. His time is about a 1-1. That's exceptionally fast to the plate. You saw the pickoff move. Excellent quick feet to first base. And the success rate against Dickey actually below major league average. The 1-1. Now two balls, one strike. How about this, guys? 
Dickey has not allowed a stolen base over his last 17 starts. That's amazing. Watch Martin stick this pitch. He thinks he's got a strike below the knees. Talk about great hands. To be able to frame a knuckleball. It's pretty special. Now two and two on Beltre, who drove in a run in his last at bat in the third inning of game one in Toronto. Well, this swing is always interesting. It's never much of an oil painting. You see him drop down to a knee and take a hack. That's just not a comfortable swing, though. He's not able to finish. You can see where it's almost like he gets to a point when his, or his back is tightening up on him on that spin. Two back in at first. So quick with the feet. Well, the one thing about most knuckleballers, and R.A. falls in this category with Huff and everybody else, they have a tendency to balk, to jump and come across. R.A.'s got great footwork, as you see there. But most pitchers, when they're come right-handed pitchers, pitchers in particular, when their hands are still moving, are when they're going to be the fastest. I think with a knuckleballer, I, if you're only going on the fact that Russell Martin's not going to be able to stay back and catch it. You just got to go. Right center coming out is Bautista. He dives and he cannot make the play. Two on for the Rangers with only one out here in the bottom of the first inning. What an effort by Bautista. I thought he had it at first. You can see how it's so hot here. The ball's hanging a long time because this ball looked like off the bat it's falling easy. And he closed some ground to get close to it. Great effort. Let's take a look at Beltre getting down the line. How's he running? How's he feeling? He's just talking to it. He looks okay. Big opportunity for Prince Fielder, who is just one for 12 in the series. He has not driven in a run in the postseason in his last 89 plate appearances. All-time record by Bill Miller, 109. How did he end it? That big base hit against Rivera, game four, 2004. That's right. Center field, Pilar. Two out. There's two tags. He's in at third. That sounded good off the bat. And that's the thing with the knuckleballer. If you don't square it up, it sounds good. But look at the swing. It looks like he's on it. It just caught it off the tail end, off the back a little bit, off the tail end of the back. All right, Dickey. Making the game four start, David Price, as we saw last night, is available once again. And keep this in mind, John Gibbons told us if he gets him up, he will get him in the game. And they feel like he can go four or five innings today, if need be. Now, he's in standby mode right now. He hasn't thrown a pitch out in that bullpen yet. He's just waiting on the word. Getting loose, though. They don't have... A whole lot of rope today. Mitch Borland 0 for 6 in the series. Off the fists. Rangers stranded two base runners in the bottom of the first.
telecast is sponsored by T-Mobile. Switch to the Uncarrier today. By Bank of America, who invites you to keep sharing your favorite baseball memories all postseason. And by Chevrolet. Find new roads. 3 0 lead for the Blue Jays here in Arlington. Woo! Top of the second inning as Russell Martin takes a called strike. Nothing in one. Derek Collin allowing two first inning home runs. Donaldson and Colabello. Nothing in two on Martin, who was not of the Blue Jays lineup last night. Deonor Navarro behind the plate for Toronto caught Marco Estrada, who is brilliant. Yeah, Estrada was great last night. Just, I was so impressed with the fastball changeup combination. And the more we watch games, the more guys are throwing changeup. It's just a tough pitch for hitters to pick up, especially in this day and age of power pitching, where you're seeing so many guys mid 90s. Estrada allowing just one run, on five hits and six and a third, picked up the win. Two and two on Martin. He'll be followed by Pilar and then Goins. Popped up to the right side. In foul territory. It's going. Well, Kenny, I thought that Holland against this lineup was the most difficult matchup for Texas because Texas has used right-handed sliders and left-handed change-ups. Balls working away from right-handers. Holland doesn't have that in his game. You saw that fastball he wanted away. Leaked over the plate. Another fastball wanted away, leaked over the plate. Now he does have a changeup, but it's the worst of his five pitches. I think he's going to have to mix that in more regardless. He did throw one to Russell Martin, but he wants to work more inside, sinking the ball away, not his strength. Here's Kevin Pilar, who has four hits in the series, including one in each of the first three games. Two for four last night. In the game three victory. And he drills this one. Deep left center. It's gone. Third home run of the game over the first two innings for the Blue Jays, who now take a 4 0 lead as David Price celebrates in the bullpen. But that caught a home run ball. Hey, Tom, your point. Right on cue. And sometimes you, you see a guy early, and I see the banisters coming out, have a little conversation. The matchup, it just doesn't match. And he's a guy who likes to throw that fastball and challenge, and this is a club that loves to hit the heater. Well, that's another pitch left up in the zone. Off speed pitch this time. Watch the location again. Torinos wants it down. Wow, what a mistake. Looked like the slider that just didn't slide at all into the barrel for Kevin Pillar. And Dave Price had him positioned perfectly. <laughs> this is what you like about Dave Price. Look at him. That's three. Well, let's not forget, too, Derek Holland working on 10 days of rest. Kevin Pillar, 12 home runs during the regular season, including two in one game off Max Scherzer. I think it's going to be an offensive game, guys. The Rangers already were shooting right there, ready to score last half inning. Nolan's 0 for 10 in the series, now 0 for 11. So two outs, top of the second inning. Well, remember the other day, Texas's big rally started with a hit and run. Today, the offense for Toronto started with a bunt base hit by Ben Revere. You get Holland off the mound, you get him in the stretch, and ba boom, Donaldson with the home run. Eric Holland making his fifth career postseason start for the Rangers. Texas has won each of the previous four. His last postseason start, game four of the 2011. World Series and went over the Cardinals. But a different story today is he has allowed three home runs over the first two innings. Well, he's just got to settle down, get into the flow of the game, and give him some innings. 
Right back to the box. That will do it for the Blue Jays in the second, but they add to their lead. First career postseason home run for the number eight hitter, Kevin Pillar. Blue Jays lead by four, middle of the second. team at the MLB.com shop. Kenny Albert, Harold Reynolds, Tom Verducci, Ken Rosenthal in Arlington. Game four. Road team has won each of the first three. And the road team out to a 4 nothing lead today as Elvis Andrews takes a called strike. R.A. Dickey making his first career postseason start. And 10 years in the Texas organization, he made his major league debut in this ballpark in 2001. Picked up his first major league win in this ballpark in 2003 and made his first major league start in this ballpark Woo! later that year. Yeah, he was a big draft pick for the Rangers. What was that? He had a, a ligament damage in his arm? He did as a number one draft pick. First round pick back in 96. First strikeout for Dickey as we head to Los Angeles for another game break while they fitting Kevin Burkhart. All right, Kevin, Josh Hamilton broke out of an 0 for 31 in the postseason last night, hits in each of his last two at bats. So the Astros took a 6-2 lead into the eighth, looking to wrap up the series, and the Royals score five. Incredible. You, you, you thought it might be over because their bullpen has been throwing the ball much better as of late. They struggled down the stretch, the Astro bullpen that was. Then to come back now, the Royals, wow. Well, can you mention the two hits for Hamilton last night? 
You know, of course, he missed some time, had some surgery on the knee, and actually it was barking on him today when he got to the ballpark. He did not get out on the field pregame. Pops it up, left side of the infield. Two out. When you get behind against a knuckleballer, it becomes a little more frustrating for you as a hitter. Because you can normally wait them out. They're going to maybe walk guys, force them to have to really work on their control. But the further they get out in front, and the more they make you have to swing the bat as a team to get back in it to take away the running game when you're down four. Uh, you know, a lot of things start to happen as that lead increases. It becomes better for the knuckleball pitcher. Strike one to Rudnett Odor, who has scored five runs in the series. And R.A.'s got a great knuckleball working today. Ball's dancing. He's not only a knuckleballer, but a knuckleballer who won a Cy Young Award just three years ago. Yes, the Mets. It's a big trade Blue Jays made. This whole thing started really when you go back and you look at the R.A. Dickey trade and the Florida Marlins deal they made. He's got it working today, folks. Second strike out of the inning, a one, two, three second. Blue Jays lead by four. Top of the third at Arlington. Blue Jays with a 4 nothing lead on the Rangers. Josh Donaldson <laughs> squares and takes strike one from Derek Holland. Donaldson, second batter of the game. Two-run shot. His second home run of the series. Donaldson, Bautista, and Carnacion for Toronto here in the third. Saw the changeup right there. Derek Holland is running out of rope. Because Colby Lewis, a starting pitcher, warmed up last inning. He's throwing right now. It's almost as if Holland is in batter by batter mode right now. Holland has allowed three home runs. He also allowed three home runs the last time 
He faced the Blue Jays back in late August. When you have a starting pitcher in your bullpen, you just can't treat him like a traditional relief pitcher. Needs time to warm up, and you certainly don't want to get him up multiple times. And that being because there are routines that they go through, and normally before a game for a starter, it takes them 20, 25 minutes to warm up to get themselves ready to go before a game starts. So you try to get that guy up, like Tom's talking about, with enough leeway that he stays on that same similar routine. Those guys there, you get them up in a heartbeat. But the other guy warming up takes a little more time. Wanted that one. Yeah, he tried to change up again away. You have right handed left handed pitchers but you also have a dominant side to the plate as a pitcher. Right off pitch. Fastball missing high ball mm. four. Donaldson heads to first. Share your favorite postseason memories using hashtag MLB memory bank. What's yours Ken. Well, I remember watching that one. Yeah. Joe Carter back in 93. That was special. I was up there at that series. Great group of guys there. That was that was a terrific team, that Blue Jay team. 92 and 93. Bautista with a shot off the wall and left. That's what he'd been waiting for all day right there. That ball inside. He missed it last night and he missed it the first at bat, but when Holland continued to pound him inside, you're giving him free at bats and free looks. That's I think it's gonna be it for him, to be yeah. honest with you. And as I said, a dominant side of the plate for Holland, it's the inside part, not the outside part. So Derek Holland in his fifth career postseason start does not make it out of the third. Third start of the season for Derek Collin against the Blue Jays. He'll have three home runs. Colabello, Bautista, and Encarnacion. Fast forward less than two months later. Game four today. Three home runs. Donaldson, Colabello, and Pilar. And the same story in every case, Kenny. If you watch the position of the catcher's glove, the glove was always set lower than the point of contact. Missing up in the zone and paying for it. So here's Colby Lewis, who made 33 starts this season, led the Rangers in wins with 17. It's his fifth year with Texas. 
And it will be his first relief appearance as a Ranger. He has not come out of the bullpen since September of 07 with Oakland in Boston. And they're playing for outs. You know, they're trying to minimize the damage. The infield's not drawn in. They're going to try to get an out, give up a run, try to keep this from breaking open and getting too far out of hand. And Cardacion on the ground to the shortstop. Andrews, he triple clutches. That was a big play right there by Elvis Andrews. He applies the tag on Bautista. That's a great After play. Donaldson scores, it's now 5 nothing Toronto. You know, that, that, that that's, you've given up the run. And you want to take an out. And you're going to leave Bautista at second, no problem. And, and they're going to have a chance to drive in another run. This is a big out. Nice backhand play. But watch him look to catch the runner. He knows he's got a long throw. But out of the peripheral vision, out of the corner of his eye, he's able to catch Bautista getting ready to go to third base and got the out. That's a huge out in keeping this inning manageable. Now you get a double play ball. You got a chance to get out of the inning. He beat them. Bautista had visions of crossing over to third if a long throw made to first. Never left his hand. I think he came up with full intent to go to first. And as he's coming up, he was able to spot Bautista. He's going to throw Encarnacion out from deep in the hole right there. There's no doubt about it. He's hit down the left field line off the bat of Colabello. Into the left field corner. Rounding third is Encarnacion. He will score. It is now 6 0 Blue Jays. That's a big play right there. Nice hustle. And I love the aggressiveness at third base by the third base coach to send it. Down the line, in the corner, fair. They were kind of trying to play him off the line a little bit in the outfield. It's one thing in the infield. In the outfield, they're playing him a little bit more towards left center. That's why it took a minute for Hamilton to get over there. The ball's in front of you, and Carnarcion turned it on the whole way around. It's all over the plate. Wake up the Jays, man. This offense is clicking. So Lewinsky takes ball one. So the Blue Jays who led baseball in runs and home runs during the regular season. They scored only 12 runs over the first three games in this series. They have exploded for six over the first three innings. Well you can see the offense coming last night. Remember they hit into four consecutive double plays in innings. Four innings in consecutive double plays that kind of snuffed out their rallies. So the offense was there and swinging the bats today to put it all together. You see Kobe Lewis trying to work that spot down and away. Don't forget, Jeff Bannister had an option to start Derek Holland or Colby Lewis today. He decided to go with Derek Holland because down the stretch, Holland was the one throwing the better baseball. Matchup wise, the worst option. Well, right now it's tough to find a matchup for this offense. And when they're clicking like this, this is the Toronto Blue Jay offense you fall in love with. Five extra base hits for the Blue Jays today, including three home runs. Shallow center. The Shields makes the catch. Two away. It's a funny game. Ninety three wins for the Blue Jays during the regular season. First team in history to trail in their division by at least eight games at the All Star break and then win the division by at least six games. And they really had a terrific second half. The big trade made the big difference in this club, no doubt about it. With the attitude, you got David Price, you pick up Tula Whiskey, it just changed everything. And when your front office goes out and does a big move like that, you feel like, all right, this is our chance to really make a run. It was a good club, now it became a great club. First 
trip to the postseason since 93. And last night, the Blue Jays won for the first time in franchise history in the postseason when facing elimination. They passed the Yankees like the Yankees were standing still. Six game lead the Yankees had heading to the last two months of the season. What you're seeing now is how they play baseball. This is Blue Jays baseball. Big blue machine. They got all 12 cylinders firing right now. To Martin, missing high and away ball two. Six nothing Toronto. Top of the third inning. Blue Jays trail the series two games to one. The three one in for a call strike. Colabello the runner on second. They did yesterday. They did not do in games one and two. Not chasing. The strike zone discipline has really improved these last two games, making Rangers pitchers get the ball into the strike zone. And when they do, they're not missing it, it's squaring it up. But Tom, you, you brought this point out yesterday a little bit. That was a ball from the time it left his hand. You know, you can see as a hitter where that ball's releasing, that's why you're not biting. The different the difference that I've seen. Is most of the balls that were they were swinging at look like they might be strikes and then they're leaving the zone whether it was a cutter or whether it was a slider or whatever it might be that fastball right there from Colby Lewis was outside and never came back. After a visit from pitching coach Mike Maddox Lewis will face the seventh Blue Jay. To come to the plate here in the third, Kevin Pilar, who homered in the last inning. Two on, two out. Ball one to Pilar. Pilar now with a 14 game hitting streak dating back to the regular season. Final 10 regular season games, a hit in every game of this series. Torinos. And when you're facing a hitter that's hot, like Pilar, you got to come down with it. There's a few things he's contending with. Look at all the stuff on the batter circle right there. He's he's stepping on on the on deck circle. You've got a rosin bag. You've got bat laying there. You've got all this, the the sleeves that go on the bat. Everything there. Look at all these things he's got to contend with as he's coming over here. And he slipped on that bat right there. That kind of threw him off a tad bit. He got through that obstacle course, but just didn't get all the way over to the wall. That's like a machine shop down there. Yeah, they got a lot stuff of stuff they got going on. Got three warm up bats, heavy bats. You got three sleeves, a rosin bag, got rosin chalk. That boy's earning his money today. <laughs> yeah, Hot day toting that stuff back and forth every inning. The entire sport a good store. He just basically said, forget it, I'm laying it all right here. Hello, and a base hit into left field. Palabello comes home and is now 7 0 Toronto. Second run battered in of the game for Pilar. The hitting shoes on today, man. Woo. Officially hot off speed pitch. Not a bad location. Look how far outside this is. <laughs> oh, playing a little tennis there. A little Federer dropping it in. That was a nice, great well, hand eye coordination on that. Maddox went out to the mound there to set Colby Lewis down. Left unsaid. 
Don't look over your shoulder, buddy. There is nobody throwing in the bullpen. We need you to give us some length. And you look at Pilar right there, you know, yesterday I talked about you, Rugnet Odor, and you watch players over a, a series like this where it's high intensity and you see what they, they're made of. Pilar has stepped up and shown all the things he can do. Great catches, big base hits. We saw a home run. He's really shining on the spot right now. Two hits, two runs batted in today for Pilar. Ryan Goins popped to the shortstop. Andrews, his first time up, sends this one to deep center field. The Shields back, and he makes the catch on the warning track to end the inning. But the Blue Jays extend their lead. They chase Rangers starter Derek Collins, three home runs. Donaldson, Colavello, and Pilar. Seven nothing Blue Jays, middle of the third. Division Series winner. I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it. As Robinson Chirinos leads off for the Rangers. He's batting for the first time, and his team is already trailing by seven. Wow. Chirinos one for seven in the series. As Dickie misses low and away, one and one. Think about how quickly things change. Bottom of the first inning after three batters. David Price is up in the bullpen for Toronto. Alarms, sirens, whistles going off just in case. We sit here with R.A. Dickey in command with a seven run lead. Now, we mentioned early in the season, Tom, Dickey played by a lack of run support. Certainly not the case today. Right center off the bat of Torinos. And the catch is made by the right fielder, Bautista, for out number one as we check in on the other American League Division Series with Kevin. <laughs>
All right, thanks, Kevin. So a seven run game here, but the Astros had a 6 2 lead heading into the eighth down in Houston. Yeah, and, and you wouldn't think that would get away from you. Five months, they had the best bullpen in baseball, and for the last month, the worst, running on fumes. Kansas City, the defending American League champ, scoring five in the eighth and then two in the top of the ninth to take a 9 6 lead. Rare fastball right there from Dickey. Well, he'll mix one in every now and then. He'll probably come back with one here, too. I mean, he's got seven run lead now. It's about throwing strike for him. There it is. You know, it's 81 miles an hour, but when you're throwing a knuckleball that's floating up there, it looks like the guy's going to be able to get rid of it a little bit faster. That ball looks harder to you. Now the 2-1-2 to Shields and routed to third his first time up. Try to sneak another one by. the difficulty of facing a knuckleballer when he's got a big lead I talked about that before but now there's no threat to run he can bust off his nasty knuckleball that he wants to throw on the ground to the shortstop to for out number two we take you back to 1996 Ari Dickey second from the left on the cover of baseball America drafted in the first round by the Texas Rangers represented the United States in the 96 Olympics won a bronze medal in Atlanta 16 and 19 record with the Rangers won the National League Cy Young with the Mets and then that seven player deal I think it worked out for both squads guys Noah Syndergaard and Travis Darno two pretty important cogs for the New York Mets going the other way yeah it, it's worked out I think the big thing for R.A. Dickey is that Blue Jays have to go a long ways in the postseason for that to look good on their side. The Mets is future, and they're there right now. But Tom, you want to well, talk he's about on, this? He's on the cover here. This is him. But the Rangers doctor looked at the shape of his arm, the angle of that elbow, and said, "There's something not right there." You said on that side of the right field. Yeah, I mean, who needs an X-ray, right? They could tell on the picture, the still picture on the cover. The angle of the bent elbow that something wasn't right and sure enough he did have an elbow ligament issue and lost a big chunk of his signing bonus. So he got busted because he was on the cover of this thing. So this long road of R.A. Dickey to get to his first postseason start has been a rocky one. Twists and turns everywhere. Hey Doc you see that R.A. Dickey kid we're going to draft him. Oh yeah I saw him on the cover arm doesn't look right. What? Crazy. Beltre batting for the second time, single back in the first inning. And then 10 years after he's drafted, in April of 2006, Dickey makes his last start for the Rangers in a game against the Tigers. He allows six home runs in three and the third. <laughs> and that's it. Does not pitch in the major leagues again for two years. Wow. And I like the description of the knuckleball. It's a pitch born of desperation. Tim Wakefield was a failed infielder. Charlie Hopp hurt his shoulder. Tim Wakefield, who was a roommate back in the early 90s in the Pirates system with Rangers manager Jeff Bannister. And we had an interesting conversation with Jeff earlier today about his time spent with the knuckleball of Wakefield. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The fact that they were roommates and and he basically said and when, he, and when Wakefield got sent to double A ball, he was coaching him and said, hey, until you can Make me miss the ball catching it. You know, I can't recommend you to go back. And you see the field right there. Look at that. You see the shadows are cre creeping in too. That becomes even more of a challenge for the Texas Rangers to me. With a fastball, I can know where it's going to stay in the zone. A knuckleball, I don't know where it's going. And now you throw a shadow in there. Good luck. Beltre started down towards first, but. Marvin Hudson says stay right here at strike two. That's a pitch that's not easy to catch or call. Umpire really has to stay on the pitch. Such late movement. And a nice job by Russell Martin to frame it. Well, the deception is the catcher's framework really doesn't matter 
with a knuckleball. It is where it goes over the plate to that on. Chu on the move, and Beltre with his second hit of the day. Chu, and it's third. Rangers with runners on the corners and two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. And the biggest story for me was Adrian Beltre. Even on the pitch he took, he didn't look right. So, yeah, he got a base hit, and now the first and third as he drives this ball through. Good effort by Tulo, but what's the other Adrian on the finish here? I mean, he, we're seeing the same signs we saw of the game the other day. Look, this is going to be a challenge for them moving forward. You're down seven runs in the third. Do you continue to jeopardize possibly him not playing game five if it goes there? It's trusting a veteran player to know not only his body, but how to play with a compromised body, essentially playing at about 60%. Prince Fielder flies to center his first time up. How about the fact that Beltre, who is in obvious pain, is now three for three at the plate in the series? How about that? He's getting it done. Here's a chance for Prince to drive in a run. He hasn't done that. We were talking about that last time. But... He's now got 90 postseason plate appearances without driving in a run. You guys, I'm watching Adrian Beltre. I got to take him out of the game. I, he just he can't move when he tries to jump off and do his secondary movements. It is a struggle. Tom, I know you you said hey, and they've said it to us. You got to trust that player, but sometimes you got to step in for the player too. It's worth repeating. Jeff Bannister calls him the toughest player I've ever been around. Pitch gets away from Martin. Beltre hobbles to second, two scores. Rangers with their first run of the game. It's now 7 1. That's to get what you get with a knuckleball pitcher. 24 pass balls and wild pitches this year. It looked like that. There's another one. That was close to hitting his pants if it didn't hit his pants. But watch Andrew Beltre. Here's what I'm talking about. Picture speak for itself. Pilar on the run. Makes the catch to end the inning. Rangers on the board. A run on two hits. It's now 7-1, James.
Here in Arlington, Texas, Toronto Blue Jays with a 7-1 lead on the Texas Rangers as we move to the fourth, and we welcome those of you on FS1 who have been watching the Royals and the Astros. What a comeback by Kansas City as they force a game five on Wednesday night. Kenny Albert, Harold Reynolds, Tom Berducci, Ken Rosenthal. The Toronto Blue Jays lost the first two games of this series at home. A 5-1 victory for the Jays last night. And they hit three home runs over the first two innings today. Took a 7-0 lead. And then the Rangers with a run on the bottom of the third. Ben Revere leading off against Colby Lewis, who came on in relief of Rangers starter Derek Holland back in the third inning. Revere started the game with a bunch single. Came around to score on a Donaldson home run. Yeah, if you were watching the game in Houston, you missed an unscheduled home run derby. Three of the first eight Toronto batters home runs off of Derek Holland. Three home runs on the first 24 pitches of the game thrown by Holland. As Revere draws a leadoff walk, our game summary is sponsored by Budweiser. A lot to talk about. Blue Jays with three home runs, franchise record in a postseason game. Donaldson with his second of the series. They chase Holland early. Rangers with a two games to one lead in the series. Well, I thought they had a great game plan. The home runs were opposite field. The Pilar pulled one into left center field, but Donaldson opposite way, opposite way. And they just really came with a great game plan on Holland and took him out of the game early. No train. The second. And now on the first, but Morland pulled off the bag. Now uh, they might see a replay on that one there. So Adrian Beltre, in case you joined us later, we're watching the Astros and the Royals not scheduled to start for the Rangers today, about an hour before the game, the switch. And he's having a tough time moving around, but he does have two base hits, and we just saw him make that play at third. Yeah, you can clearly see that, that he is not moving as fluid as he'd like to. And uh, so therefore he's struggling with the throw and he's swinging the bat run the bases. He's out playing. It's inspirational Tom, but he's not moving very well. It is and we talk about when to go get a pitcher in this case. We'll be talking about when to go get a third baseman who's obviously compromised with that back. Obviously score dependent. But if we do get to a game five, you want to make sure Beltre is back in the lineup. Well, there's the out with Odor. He caught the ball. Now he goes to transfer to make the throw is when he dropped it. So it was clearly a catch. That's why there's force at second base when many may have thought it was a drop but he went to transfer to make the throw to first on the double play but that was a Beltre throw that took him off the line you usually don't see that that's a double play ball and that's all I think because of the injury he's not able to, to handle the, the glove and the ball the way he normally would left center catch is made by the shields for out number two Two away, here's Encarnacion. With Donaldson, the runner on first. Encarnacion drove it a run back in the third inning. On a field his choice, and he takes strike one from Colby Lewis. time to get a big lead like the Blue Jays have right now and it's seven to one you start to play a little more complacent obviously that's the way the game is kind of played you don't want to rub it in so to speak sportsmanship like but in postseason your fourth inning seven one I think if you got a chance to continue to run bases and put pressure on the other team you do it I'm still impressed with the quality of the at bat starting in game three this is like an expensive sports car I went into the garage just wasn't running right in the first two games this is Blue Jays baseball right now. They're humming. And Harold, with regard to what you just mentioned, keep in mind the Astros had a 4-1 lead in the eighth inning at home today. Yeah, I mean, it's not over. And, and postseason is not a regular 162-game schedule. 
the old book, so to speak, gets thrown out. You just got to continue. You got to bury a team. You got to put them away when you got a chance to do it. A 2 2 from Lewis. And Carnacion fouls it back. Seven runs on seven hits for the Blue Jays. Colabello on deck. He took Derek Collin deep back in the first inning. One of three Toronto home runs. Donaldson and Pilar with the others. After the Blue Jays. Got a team batting average of just 204 over the first three games. Well, that's a big pitch right there, 2 2, because now 3 2, two outs, Donaldson's running, and a gapper scores him easy. Anything down the corner or in the gap. 2 2, you throw a strike or the ball gets hit, he's probably not scoring. Now he's off and running on the pitch. There goes Donaldson, and a base hit up the middle for Encarnacion. So the Blue Jays have runners in the corners. Donaldson in at third. Third hit of the series for Encarnacion, his first since game one. Just so impressive. Encarnacion is one of the most aggressive swingers on the club, but he worked that at bat to his sixth pitch by staying off some pitches just off the plate. They're seeing playing with so much confidence right now. They are, and they're seeing the ball great right now. And I know shadows are coming in, but this is a great hitter's park. You got a great hitter's batting eye where you pick the ball up. You see that in center field, how dark that is. That's just a white ball coming out of that darkness there. It's a beautiful thing to hit. Now, the shadows are starting to come in, but I don't think they take a full effect right now because the pitcher's in the shadow as well. Colorado takes ball one. He's two for two today, a home run, and then an RBI double to the third. Harold, you mentioned his heritage earlier. His dad, Lou, played baseball, represented Italy in the 1984 Olympics. Yeah, we were talking about that. He went over to Italy and played, and Omar Minaya, former Mets GM, he played over there at the same time against his dad, and he met his, his, uh, his dad met his mom over there. So he actually was born in Italy. And they would go back in the summers. He spent a lot of time because I said, so you weren't just playing on just some team when you're playing for Team Italy in the WBC. He said, no, 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 that's that's home for me. He teaches guys Italian on the team. He's got the genes. He's got the blood. He's the real deal. The Italian stallion. This ain't no movie. <laughs> got a tremendous story. Spent a number of years. Playing in the independent leagues. Yes. Yeah. One, two from Lewis. Now two balls, two strikes. You talk about the journey of R.A. Dickey. This guy's a very old Jack Kerouac. Seven years he spent playing independent baseball Jack in the Can Am League. Yeah, he was a second baseman for the old Cardinals. <laughs> Kyle Bello was making 2200 a month. Seven years toiling. Completely reworked his swing and never gave up the dream. And here he is in the postseason. And Jack never did that. <laughs> May have written about it. First and third, two outs, full count. over to FS1 for the remainder of game four.
continues later tonight with an NLDS doubleheader on TBS, Cardinals and Cubs, and then Dodgers and Mets, game three of both series. Each tied one game apiece. Tom, I can't remember a time where we've had so many storylines in each one of these playoff games. Great matchups, great baseball, and road teams got off to an incredible start in these postseason games. Road teams winning both wild card games. Road team has won all three games of this series. I want to see Jake Arietta tonight. I want to see City Field. Matt Harvey on the mound for the Mets. Earlier, one of the biggest lead inning comebacks in postseason history by the Kansas City Royals. Well, they needed a big inning, too. They've been struggling this whole series, kind of turning their way through to try to knock the Astros off. If that's a big win to send it back, not only to tie it and not be over, but for their offense to get something going and now have the game five at home. That was big for the Royals. Facing elimination on the road. What a tough-minded bunch. You saw that starting with the wild card game against Oakland last year against John Lester. Seventh inning. Moreland fouls it back. I find it amusing looking at the game here. Even with R.A. Dickey throwing and a knuckleball, and you don't know where it's necessarily going to go if a guy's going to square it up, they still put the shift on. You know, still got the second baseman out in right field. The, Third baseman's moved over to shortstop. And Marlon down on strikes. We spoke between innings with Blue Jays skipper John Gibbons. We asked John if today's performance resembles what he was used to watching from his Jays during the regular season. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, really that's who we are. And, you know, we started that from day one of the season and, and it really never cooled off. And that's kind of our identity. It's good to see her, especially early in the game. You know, give us a little breathing room here, and I think Dickie's throwing well. You know, we just got to keep an eye and make sure we don't get too many guys, you know, too much traffic on base. When we're trying to find that the perfect time, maybe we're to go to Price or somebody else. So, John, we saw David Price get up in the first inning in standby mode. How close were you to pulling the trigger? No, what he was doing there, I mean, he was up on his own, just kind of, you know, getting a little feel, getting loose a little bit. Yeah, we we, we looked down there ourselves. And said, what, did anybody call him? You know, but that's kind of his routine coming out of the bullpen to, you know, stay ready just in case. Hey, John, being around this club, they were so loose today. They're talking about their haircuts and everything else. Uh, it's got to be a fun bunch. Yeah, Harold, it really is. As you know, I've been saying all year, there's something different about this club. And, you know, I've been on many different clubs, managed and played, and had some really good ones and bad ones. And, but there's just something different about this group. And, and they show up to play every day, and they, 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 don't, they don't get rattled and uh, have a ton of confidence. So hopefully we can close this one out somehow today and then maybe hopefully move on. Thanks, John. Good luck. Okay, guys. John Gibbons, his only prior postseason experience in the major leagues, 1986. He was the bullpen catcher for the world champion Mets as Hamilton grounds out a 1 2 3 fourth for R.A. Dickey.
And Volcano of Quesarino Big Boxes. Grab them at Taco Bell. By DirecTV, call 1-800-DIRECTV. And by eSurance, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. We move to the fifth here in Arlington. First pitch from Lewis popped to shallow left center by Kulowitzki. And the catch is made by the left fielder Josh Hamilton for out number one. Kulowitzki 0 for 3. You know, Kenny, we heard John Gibbons talk about there's something different about this team. He made no bones about it when I talked to him that last year that was a fractured clubhouse. And he said things began to change in spring training when two guys, two new guys showed up. Josh Donaldson, the guy in the batter's box right now, Russell Martin, just complete grinders and gamers. And I think they set the tone in spring training with this team. It took a while to kick in. Really the last two months of the season is when they hit their stride. They impact not just the talent of those two guys, but the leadership qualities of Donaldson and Martin have carried this team a long way. Martin walked his last time up. Oh. We'll head down to first after taking that pitch from Lewis. And for more on the leadership of Russell Martin and what he has meant to the Blue Jays this season downstairs to catch. Well, guys, one thing that impressed the Jays an awful lot was Martin's willingness and ability to learn how to catch R.A. Dickey. Deanna Navarro, the backup catcher, doesn't catch Dickey. So for most of the season, Martin was the primary guy, and we've talked about this. It's not easy. It's a mental grind. It's a physical grind. The first time Martin worked with Dickey in spring training, his arm was burning after 30 pitches. He wasn't used to moving his glove so much. He had to learn to relax his arm. But as the season has progressed, he's had even better numbers with Dickey than his other catcher, Josh Tolley. And Tolley came over with Dickey from the Mets, so he had a lot more experience behind the plate with Dickey. Oh, what, what a luxury for the organization to not have to carry a guy because he can catch a bullpen, you know, and, and a lot of times because he can catch a knuckleballer, I should say. A lot of times you have that because you have that one player, but also it speaks volumes to me about Russell Martin not worried about his personal statistics. You know, in this day and age where framing and we're judge catchers by so many other measurements, instead of that leadership, which really that catcher position, you are basically the captain of the infield. You're the lead, you're leading the team. And when you have a guy that can do all those things and those intangibles, that goes a long way for a team. Throw the numbers out. You're right about trying to catch a knuckleball pitcher. I'll we'll go back to Jason Veritek trying to catch Tim Wakefield in a postseason game. He had not been used to it at all. I mean, he was running back to the screen so often. He was on a first name basis with the fans in the front row. <laughs> Pilar, left field, Hamilton, two out. And Russell Martin, guys, spent the last two seasons in Pittsburgh. Who is the Pirates bench coach? Jeff Bannister, the Rangers manager. And we asked Bannister prior to game one about his two years with Martin. Big smile came across his face when we mentioned Russell's name. He said he's off the charts, heart and soul guy. But he wants to beat you at all costs. Let me tell you, they put a lot on the plate of the catcher in Pittsburgh. Jeff Bannister had a lot to do that. Worked very closely with Russell Martin in all the analytics and game preparation. And met before game one. There was a real, real strong bond and big hug between the two of them. Ball up to Goins, who's a Texas native. He was born in Round Rock, which also happens to be where the Texas Rangers AAA affiliate is located. Went on to Dallas Baptist. Still looking for his first hit of the series. 0 for 2 today, 0 for 12 in the ALDS. Yeah, but he had a big at bat early in the series. I thought was very important to the Blue Jays. I know yesterday he hit him to a double play. But I think he's going to come on and catch up with those talents. I, I really like this kid. I mean, defensively, I still think he's one. He, he can move to shortstop right now and be mentioned in the top defenders in the league right now today. And he certainly fits that bill at second base. You know, I was talking to Omar Vizquel, infield coach for the Tigers. Great gold glove shortstop. Talking about second base in the American League, the gold glove. Dustin Pedroia missing a lot of games with injuries. This is the guy, Ryan Goins, that the great Omar mentioned that should definitely get consideration. Well, 
he'll get some consideration, but I, I, I still think he played enough at short that to kind of take him out of the second base conversation. You know, when Tulo went down, he was a shortstop. When early in the year, he played some short before that. When Reyes was injured, man, when he was hurt with the Jays a little bit, so that might knock him out. And still, a guy named Cano had a pretty good year defensively in Seattle. Goings cross a two out walk. Blue Jays with first and second. And Revere stepping to the plate. The top, there's so many awards now, but the gold glove is still pretty special. Absolutely. Son. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, kind of peering out in that bullpen. Ondorf has been up for a while. Should be just about ready. The danger of the trap for the Rangers. You want to play to try to get back in it. But if you don't get back in it, you got the luxury of knowing that you're you went you're going to go to game five. You know, season doesn't end today for you if you lose the game. It ends for the Blue Jays. But you got to be prepared if we continue to go on. We got to have enough hands on deck to win that game and move forward. And game five would be played Wednesday late afternoon in Toronto. The longer Beltre stands out there, the, the, the more uncomfortable I think he looks. Just watching him. Watch how he gets down into his, his crouch here. He doesn't even bend down. He stands. He'll get and put his hands on his knees. That's about the lower he will get. I think he's a huge story. Beltre came out of the game in the third inning of game one. Sat out game two and game three last night. Late addition to the starting lineup today. There's Hanser Alberto who had the game winning hit of the 14th inning back in game two. Yeah, the kid played great. I was really impressed with him with a little bit of time that he got. And he's not Adrian Beltre, but he did play nice in his short stint. Especially the situation he was thrown into. That was a kid who got two at bats in the month of September. And all of a sudden, game one of the postseason, go get him, kid. <laughs> Our star third baseman's hurt. Well, if this series goes to a game five, the ALDS continues on Wednesday with a doubleheader on FS1. Rangers and Blue Jays coverage begins at 3 Eastern. Game five of the Astros and Royals, 8 Eastern on FS1. This will be the 60th pitch thrown by Lewis. Out of the pen, runners go. And Revere shoots it into shallow center, coming on as the Shields to make the play. So the Blue Jays strand two in the inning. R.A. Dickey, who will turn 41 later this month. Here the Blue Jays have a six-run lead.
batting average by an American League Division Series winner. You don't have to go that far back. The Royals last season. Wow. Batting average of 198. You didn't give me a chance to guess. It speaks to how good that bullpen was and is. Disappointing, Ken. Give me a couple of innings, though. Come on. Well, yeah, I, I was. I didn't want to give it away to the fans this time around. Last time you jumped on me when I gave an answer up too early. Well, so, so you knew that one. Is that what you're telling us? You're sitting on it for an inning and a half. Sitting on it. Odor down the right field line into the fifth row. R.A. Dickey's allowed just one run on four hits over the first four innings. Today he becomes the oldest pitcher to start in his postseason debut. You see the grip with the fingernails dug into the seams of the baseball and the flight with little spin. It's all about fluid dynamics. Letting the air pass over the seams of the baseball. The air transitions from smooth to turbulent. Letting the ball dance around in the air. I'll tell you what, I have to think about all that when I'm hitting, I'm done. It's like to Turbul me watching him throw. It's like <laughs> someone with a paper airplane throwing it across the room and trying to get it out a window. It floats, it dives, it sails, it swoops, and somehow he has control of it. Look out! And that's that's the put away. He can throw it hard like that, and it looks like a slider. As the hitter, the key to hitting a knuckleball, and you've seen these young hitters struggle with him. Here's a, he pulls this down hard. It's going to run in on the hitter's feet. That's the foul ball right there. People may be looking at that and saying, how is that a knuckleball? He's throwing with his fingernails. We're not sure exactly the first guy to throw the pitch, but the one who really popularized it, A.C. Cott, back in 1908, he did throw it with his knuckles on the baseball. That's where the term knuckleball came from. Odor reaches out and fouls it off down the left field line. The look out into the Blue Jays' pen, and there he is, David Price. Well, that's not a casual catch this time. He's coming in the game. We talked about it before. Once he starts throwing that hard, he is coming in. Sounds like he's on his own program, though, from when we talked to John Gibbons. He was surprised when they got up just to loosen up in the first inning. But there's some conviction in that warm-up right now. Yeah, and that's not his call at this point in time. This is a Gibbons call, and they're going with him. Pilar in center. And John Gibbons told us before the game, if Price gets up today, he's going in. And if Price goes in, then Marcus Stroman would start game five. That's that to me. This is all, all a telling story. Look, last night they got him up in the seventh and in the eighth inning. So you're thinking, well, what's that mean? They said he was still available for Game Five. Stroman's their guy right now, and I just think you look at the matchup. He struggled, David Price, that is, against the Rangers, and I think they made a decision. They may not want to come out and say it. That's how I see it. That they basically have said Stroman's our guy in Game Five. Yeah, it's so hard to follow. When you're playing elimination games, the thinking of the manager. It's like yeah. 3D chess. Yeah. Or maybe there's an extra king or a queen on the board that should be there. <laughs> Everything changes. But I do think no matter what happens with Price, whether he's used in this game or starts game five, I do believe the confidence they have in Marcus Stroman is just incredible. He threw the ball very well after coming out a little amped up in game two, the first inning. Matulo's looking to spin and throw on this ball. He had a good read on it. And you make so many decisions when you're going at the ground ball. The way he presents his body is so he can catch and spin. You see, he's already getting ready to spin, even though the ball kicked off him. Now, back to the price conversation, Tom. I just think it's a, uh, at this point in time of the year, they're like, look, he came ready to go. You give me the ball yesterday, give him the ball today. I would not be surprised if he doesn't even come out of the bullpen game five if they need him. No, that he wouldn't surprise me. It might surprise me a little bit to see him in a game holding six runs if you're Toronto. And again, understand, elimination game, you take absolutely nothing for granted, especially with this Texas team in this ballpark. Now to Ken Rosenthal. Ken, are you surprised to see Price up and throwing here? No, Kenny. And I talked to him last night, and basically what he said is, yeah, I'm 30 years old, but I'm a young 30. And my body bounces back quickly. 
He threw 18 pitches in the bullpen last night, got up twice, was ready to come into the game. But if we see him here, even if we see him here, I don't know that we can rule out seeing him in relief in game five, assuming with the extra day, his body does indeed bounce back quickly. I totally agree, Ken. I think what they've done, the decision they've made is David Price gives us three games, basically. You look at last night, he warmed up, he was ready to come in. Tonight, this game right here, and now he will be in the pen, I think, for game five. So, Stroman's not going to give you that. And between the two, they basically said, look, we can get two games out of David Price, get him in today, and maybe five if we need it. We'll take it. 1 1 2 to Shields. And again, Gibbons was pretty definitive in our meeting with him prior to the game. He said, if Price gets up today, he's going in. And if he gets in, it's Stroman to start game five. All right, Dick, he's throwing the ball pretty good, though. Done a nice job of keeping their hitters off balance. You're back to the top of the order. Full count. Big swing by the Shields right there. He's been playing with what the Rangers are calling a sore left knee. And what they've told me, people in the organization, that he actually has a slight tear in his MCL. We'll need a procedure after the season. Bothers him mostly when he slows down, not when he's at full speed in terms of his running. Pilar moving to his left. Long run. He makes the catch. To retire to Shields for out number two. What a weapon. Him in the outfield. He can go get him. You know, Bautista basically went to back up instead of go get it. See where Pilar is at right in center field? Watch how far he goes to get this ball. And the confidence of him to catch that ball so much, Bautista says you got it. And here we go. So Ari Dickey in his first career postseason start will exit with his Blue Jays leading 7-1. Here comes David Price. the Tampa Bay Rays but back in 2008 five appearances out of the bullpen he closed out the ALCS against the Red Sox that was his hello my name is David Price moment introducing himself by sending the Rays to the World Series so Ari Dickey 
and not pick up the win. He goes four and two thirds in his postseason debut. On the first pitch from Price, Chu flies out to Pilar in center field to and the inning. A smile as David Price heads to the Blue Jays dugout. 7 1 Toronto. with the Blue Jays leading the Rangers 7-1. to one. Toronto scoring all seven of their runs over the first three innings. Three home runs for the Blue Jays. Here's Ross Ollendorf, the veteran right-hander who pitched an inning and a third in last night's game for the Rangers. In to face Donaldson, Bautista, and Carlos wow. Donaldson's home run really set the trend early after the Bunt base hit by Ben Revere and he stepped up hit a opposite field to run homer. And I emphasize opposite field because that's kind of like the dagger of I can cover anything you throw up here type of stuff to a pitcher when you go opposite field for a home run. Having fun now. You know, I see the smile right there with a six run lead sixth inning. Rangers winning each of the first two games north of the border, 5-3 and 6-4. Blue Jays coming back with a 5-1 victory here in Arlington last night. Late this game is 7-1. It was interesting looking at the face of R.A. Dickey as Price picked up that last out. I was thinking, you know, John Gibbs, he's a manager, he's not a screenwriter. In the perfect world, Dickey waits till he's age 40. He's one out away from qualifying for a victory. <laughs> With a six-run lead, 
And he gets pulled from the game. I'm An sorry. elimination game. I'm sorry, it's seven to one. All right, Dickey sitting over there going, are you kidding me? That was that look to me. You're coming to get him, get me now? Well, it's interesting because John Gibbons had Price up in the seventh and the eighth innings last night with less of a lead and waiting for two runners to get on base. Bigger lead earlier in the game, one runner on, and he went to Price. And there's the look on the face there's the R.A. Dickey. When the inning ended. A lot of years yeah, went great. into this start today. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Thanks. were born in the Nashville area. They both won a Cy Young Award the same year, 2012. Compared notes during the offseason back in Nashville. And it's Price. This is Dickey, who goes four and two-thirds in his first career postseason start here in game four. Cool. It's not bad. You're facing elimination. You get to use two Cy Young winners. <laughs> Right field. Chu takes a couple of steps in. Two away. Follow every pitch of the postseason with MLB.com at Path, the number one app for live baseball. Stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, pitch tracking, live radio broadcasts, and more. Download the At Bat app. That's a spirited Rangers fan. Have you had what he was eating though? That, that dessert. The boomstick. That's not a dessert. That's <laughs> that was the boomstick. It's a week's worth of meals in a box with <laughs> handles on it. Anytime you order food at the ballpark and it comes with handles, uh, I'd say it's a little excessive. It's still tracking the game on the app. The food doesn't come with it, but it's a good app. It's Get the hat to match too. <laughs> the old two to let Cardassi off. David Ollendorf has been a weapon. He has really reinvented himself out of the bullpen. Throwing mid 90s. The windup is, I, I love it. It's taking us way back old school. Right center, a base hit for Encarnacion. It rolls to the wall. And it's second with a stand-up double. His second hit of the day. Here's the windup. There's a nice piece of hitting, but I want to go back to the windup. Watch how this is so old. He takes the, the 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 wingspan right here, and then watch the front the foot. He disengages, goes back, reengages, step back again. Tom, I know you'd like to talk about how certain guys set. On one side of the rubber to, to get an angle, he goes all over the place. Once, <laughs> twice, uh, three times he leaves the rubber and then goes back to it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Got to keep a little bit of the little kid in you playing ball. Dolabello <laughs> takes a called strike. Two for three, first inning home run, third inning RBI double. Now, it's been interesting the last couple days. Yesterday, they had a situation similar to this. Justin Smoke usually hits in this situation, goes in and plays defense. And I know it's the sixth. He made the pitching change already. But they haven't done it the last couple days, so maybe we're seeing a little bit of a change in Gibbons' approach. Smoke came in in the eighth inning last night for defensive purposes. Top of the sixth, 7 1 Chase. You're right, it's a little early to go to your defensive specialist. And Kyle Bella looks very comfortable at the plate. He's seen the ball extremely well. Two 
balls one strike. Well, that, that's part of, of being able to pay attention to detail too. You see guys' body language, you see their confidence, you see all those things in their movements, and that's really sometimes supersedes. May not have the numbers, may not have the things you want. That's where that gut comes in. I got a feeling this guy will do something, and it's based a lot on how a guy may be carrying himself. Another foul off to the right side. And he talked about Colabella's journey to the big leagues. In January of 2012 was when he finally got an invite to the big leagues. The Minnesota Twins paid $10,000, $1,000 for his rights out of the Cam Ann League. And actually last year, a team in Korea wanted him, wanted to pay him a million dollars. And he said, no, I want to stay and get the big leagues my best shot. Colabello got on strikes. And Carnacion stranded on second. Middle of the sixth at Arlington. Still 7-1 James. Bottom six at Arlington, Adrian Beltre batting for the third time today. He has two hits despite playing with the severe pain that been straight. Came out of game one of the third inning, did not play in games two and three. But he's managed 
to bat a thousand in the series. He's three for three. I gotta believe this is his last at bat unless this is a big run inning for Texas. Don't forget, this guy already has a mangled ligament and dislocated finger on the left hand. He's got a special pad in his hand just to hit, keeps his index finger off the bat. And now the back spasm. It's just incredible the pain that this guy plays with. And this is the first time he's looked like Adrian Beltre in the box, so believe it or not, all the things we've just been discussing, but he's dancing in the box, and when he's dancing in the box, that means he feels pretty good. Watching him in the field, not comfortable. We watched him on the base path right here. I don't know, maybe loosened up in between innings, but he feels pretty good right now. Right field, Batista back on the track, makes the catch to retire Beltre. The swing looks good, and the, the, the running is what bothers you. You can see he's lean, arching his back. Like, you know, you get that tight lower back, and you, you have to arch your body just to feel like you can move. That's what he looks like to me. That's a beautiful swing, but he's not able to finish it. And that's the difference. Now watch him. And here comes the clench your back here so I can get through the, the jog down the first. He definitely looks better. No doubt. Bridge Fielder 0 for 2. Bounce to the right side. Going swinging. Two out. Well, a great day of MLB postseason action continues on TBS just underway. Jake Arrieta and Michael Waka. Tremendous pitching matchup. Game three, Cubs and Cardinals. And that game will be followed on TBS by the Mets and the Dodgers. Game three from City Field. What a comeback by the Kansas City Royals. Earlier today, they trailed 6-2 in Houston. Heading into the eighth inning. And that was survival mode. But you know what's funny? This game is so different. You think, okay, now they got the momentum. They're going to win this series. And there's no doubt that the cliche's line is momentum's the next game of the pitcher. And that is so true. Really, it's a postseason of aces as well. Arietta, to me, has cast the longest shadow over this postseason as the most dominating pitcher. I have to go back to Oral Hershiser in 88, Mike Scott in 86. You start thinking about his start if you're the opposing team the day before. You just know he's looming out there. And now we have a game where another ace is actually pitching middle relief for the Blue Jays, David Price. So we expect Marcus Stroman will be the game five starter, as for manager John Gibbons. <laughs> Morland called down on strike, so Price has faced four batters. Has retired the ball. The price is right today. He's dealing. We head to the seventh.
Mets over the first two innings. Donaldson, Calabello, and Pilar. Two hits apiece for Encarnacion, Calabello, and Pilar. Fourth pitcher of the day for the Rangers is the left hand of the ex Philly, Jake Diekman, who has retired all 12 Blue Jays he has faced in this series over the first two games. Here's Tulowitzki, 0 for 3, the only Blue Jay starter who has not yet reached pace today. But he had the big blow in the sixth inning last night, the three run home run, which extended. The Blue Jays lead to five nothing. They would win the game five one. Little surprise that Beltre stays in the game. I guess Jeff Bannister, the manager, he took note of that Kansas City comeback earlier today. It's again, trusting a veteran player who's played with a lot of pain, got a lot of experience there. It's almost a basketball coach leaving a guy on the floor with one more foul to foul out of the game. Confidence that he will play under control and not risk further injury. You, the, the, I'm looking at all these little subtle changes in the game. It seems like every one of these guys, they, they take a swing, they hack, they foul back, they yell, oh! Back in the day, you didn't scream when you took a big hack and just missed it on a pitcher. What did you do? I said, excuse me, because the next one's coming at your ear. Especially if Nolan Ryan was out there. <laughs> Kolowitzki went around. One away. It's a nasty slider. We've been talking about Dickman stuff the whole series. He, he, he's a guy that as you start looking to next season and through the rest of this postseason, but next season you sit there and you realize he got out of Philadelphia. Not a lot of people knew about him. This guy's a weapon. He's a weapon because he gets out righties as well, if not better, than left-handers. You know, I mentioned Nolan Ryan pitching a lot of it. The luck of genetics. Nolan Ryan had that great lower half. Pedro Martinez, the really long, supple fingers to spin the baseball. Jake Diekman, he's got really ridiculously long arms. He's six foot four. His wingspan is six foot eight. He told me going in to just buy a shirt <laughs> off the shelf, a dress shirt, forget about it. But the long levers that he has works. As an advantage for a guy, especially the low release point he has, the arm angle he creates, just a nightmare for any kind of a hitter, right or left. He reminds you of Chris Sale. An awful lot. Looking at him right there, long, skinny, lanky, and then he starts the delivery out here at the arm angle you talk about, and he's got the cheddar. 97. That's why he reminds me of uh, Andrew Miller as well. Very simple delivery, almost just falls to the batter with the tremendous arm speed. And the angle he creates on right handed hitters, the ball bearing in on them. Martin into the right field corner, off the wall. Fielded by Chu. Martin in its second with a double. Tell you, they, they've, they've made an adjustment, and Texas is going to have to adjust back. You can't live on the outside half the whole series against a certain team, particularly these guys. We talked about in game one, the uniqueness of the Blue Jays hitters is they don't strike out a lot. They have power, but they're not the power guys you just punch out all the time. So the adjustments we've seen them make, even in today's game, the home runs opposite field right here, Martin opposite field to the wall. Uh, those are the things that, that Texas is going to have to adjust to if we get to a game five. Yeah, you see that was a miss by Diekman. Set target set up inside, left the ball out over the plate. Seventh extra base hit of the game for the Blue Jays. And they are not missing mistakes. No. But he's a guy, if, you, if there's any vulnerability for Diekman, his delivery does not tell you he's going to be able to pitch into right-handers. From where he comes at, that slider is going to be a backdoor slider. The fastball is going to be a fastball outside. Jim Lefever, a guy I played with before in Seattle for a number of years, he'd always say, pick up the lane that the pitcher pitches in. This guy's a one-lane pitcher in the, into left-handers away from the right-hander. That's where he seems to be living right now, in that outside lane to a righty, 
inside lane to a left hand. And that double off the bat of Martin, the first hit Deekman has allowed in this series. The Blue Jays had been 0 for 13 against Deekman prior to that at bat. <laughs> Deekman coming over from the Phillies in late July at the deadline, along with Cole Hamels. One out, top of the seventh inning. Martin, the runner on second. The one two to Pilar. Up the middle, base hit. Into center field. Martin around third, heading home. The throw is cut off. Blue Jays lead eight to one. Third one batted in of the game for Kevin Pilar. Harder than a pistol. And Pilar is living up the middle. You remember early in the series back in Toronto when they drew the infield in and he was at the plate. I said what that does it allows a hitter now to think more back up the middle and he got a base hit. His stroke has been right there. The home home run today was left center field. But when you got an approach to go back up the middle you're on a lot of pitches and you're consistently being able to drive that baseball. It's hot right now. Oh, this lineup. I mean, it's like playing whack-a-mole. It doesn't matter where they are. You think you got one, somebody else pops up. It doesn't matter where they are in the lineup. Pilar with seven hits in the series. Three today. He's seven for 17 in the ALDS. Wow. There's Gomez. 0 for 2 with a walk. It's going to be a tough at bat into the lefty in that lane. See where he set up this ball is going to be busted right underneath Gowen's hands. He puts it where he wants it. I just think he's tough on left handers. He steps at you. So until you see him a few times, you're going to think he's stepping to his target, and that target is you <laughs> because the way he steps. Keone Kella up in the Rangers pen. Texas starter Aaron Holland unable to make it out of the third inning. Colby Lewis, who led the Rangers in wins with 17 this season, pitched three innings out of the pen. Then Russ Ohlendorf, now Jake Deepman. Second is Pilar. Go past the bag. We've watched this happen on this field. Remember, that's how the uh, Angels had lost that that game slide or won the game. Slide past the bag. He'll slide past the bag here too.
T-Mobile wants fans to share their passion, be part of the biggest seventh inning stretch. Post your photos and videos with hashtag the big seventh and hashtag contest for a chance to win tickets to World Series Game Four. It's Game Four of the American League Division Series. Blue Jays with an 8-1 lead. Toronto 50 and 50, 500 record over their first 100 games. They were seven games back. In their division through July 27th, but then the big deals acquiring Tulowitzki, Price, and Revere at the deadline. Since July 31st, second best record in baseball. They wind up leading the majors in runs scored and home runs. Win the division title, their first trip for the postseason since 1993. They lost the first two games of this series at home, but here in Arlington, a 323 batting average in games three and four. 13 runs, 10 extra base hits, four home runs, including three of the early innings today. Uh, this is the Blue Jays baseball, no question. Let's not forget the way that Gallardo and Hamels pitched them in game one is the blueprint for this team. They pitched to that blueprint exceedingly well in these last two games. They just didn't have the command, talking about the Rangers pitchers, to keep this lineup in check. And when they left the ball over the plate, my goodness, anywhere in the lineup capable of doing damage. David Price has faced four batters since replacing Ari Dickey with two outs in the fifth. He's retired all four. Strike one to Andrews, who is 0 for 2. Rangers without a base hit since the third inning. So let's say David Price. This game, he gets the W, right? He would. He would. It scores discretion, but certainly, he certainly has pitched long enough and effectively enough to get that W. The guy who, as a starting pitcher, lost all five times in the postseason. Base hit off the bat of Andrews, leading off the seventh for the Rangers. Get back in it with a big ball. There's a changeup from David Price. Elvis gets out, stays with it. Nice hand eye coordination. But that's how the Rangers get back in it. You, you got to get a big ball to get you into that bullpen and force some action. I think I said Price had five losses as a start, actually six, yeah. including that game one start. Mike Napoli. Pitch hitting for Josh Hamilton. You got a number wrong, Tom? <laughs> I ain't believing it. Mark down the date and time. I'm, I'm marking I was trying it. to cut the guy. I was trying to cut the guy a break. <laughs> oh, it's six. Ouch. Woo, what is the date today? <laughs> the 12th of October, 2015. I'm writing this in there. Boy. I'll tell you what, though. He looks comfortable. Just dropped into the middle of the game, you know? Sure does. Uh, you know, the other night he said... He was a little amped up, a little nervous. Looks like he's relaxed. And sometimes guys come out of the bullpen, you take them out, that natural pressure's off of you. You got a nice win. Get your work in. And that's what it looks like here. Maybe he's able to regain that feel again. Sam Dyson in the Rangers pass. Leadoff bat on for Texas for the first time today. One of their third leadoff base hit in the series. Fouls off a ton of pitches. Two strikes. You see him shorten the leg kick, choke up on the bat. The other thing he does so well, he's such a back foot hitter. Very difficult to get him out on his front foot on a changeup. He lets the ball travel deep in the batter's box. I think if you throw him a changeup, you're doing him a favor.
Double play ball. Blue Jays turn two. Pretty turn right there, those two working together. But I, I want to see, show you how Tula Whiskey comes across the bag right here. Get up, put something on it. Beautiful. That sometimes is the price for letting that ball travel to get deep. Did something hard on the hands, got it in his kitchen. Well, that's why I, I said you're doing him a favor in the changeup when you got a guy throwing this hard that can get deep in when you got a one two count. So, two more years, Odor, who was the big story for the Rangers over the first two games of this series. He scored five runs in the two games in Toronto, both Texas victories. Yeah, the one thing that surprises me with Rudnett Odor is where the defense plays him. It's almost shocking to me that they put this kind of shift on him, and I think that's something he's got to work on in the offseason. If he's able to hit that ball the other way, he's going to dominate this league. Yeah, he loves to hook the baseball. Even the ball away, he likes to hook. The place where he does not cover well is the pitch down and in. But Odor, I'm telling you, he's a guy who's five foot seven, thinks he's six foot seven. A lot of these Rangers use very big bats. It's a guy who uses a 35-inch bat, Odor. Napoli does, but Napoli's got a few more LBs on him than this guy right here. Odor, just 21 years of age. That is a that heavy, that heavy of a bat is a throwback mentality. Most guys are swinging 32, 31 ounces today. And really, the, the philosophy and thought behind a heavier bat is if you can just touch it, the ball's going to jump. And that's the swing I'm talking about. That ball's away, and he's trying to hook the baseball. Get that big a bat, man. Once it gets going, you can't stop it. Ooh. Odor hit 16 home runs this season despite spending a month in the minor leagues. The only other second baseman in baseball history under the age of 22 to hit that many home runs, Bill Mazeroski, 1958. Wow, I was going to say somebody like Bobby Gritch or something. Maz. There it is, right there. That's all he's got to do. Eldor wishes to Harold, heading for two. Not now. I'm telling you, if he adds that to his game, and now you force that defense to open up. It opens up the right hand side for him as well as down the line. You're talking about a guy that's going to go from 270, 280 to 310, 320. With his power and his ability, he's going to walk because he has power. And if he can shoot a ball there, that's a double. He hit a ground ball double. I mean, he's got to look around and open that up. He's got to add that to his repertoire. First extra base hit. For the Rangers today, and the first hit by someone other than Chu and Beltran. Yeah. And Andrews here in the seventh, of course. <laughs> so David Price working in relief here in game four. Has allowed two hits in the seventh. He retired the Rangers in order in the sixth. And that little walkout right there by Russell Martin is how you feel? You okay? We need to get everybody up? No, I'm good. They're not even moving in the bullpen right now. And I think it's interesting, Tom, with both managers being former catchers. And when you have Russell Martin be able to go out right there and come back and look at Gibby, he's good. That trust that both these guys have, because they've been catchers themselves, to have that that I and be able to have that conversation that rapport between their catchers it's, it's huge. Well I think there's no question Bannister is still playing to win this game here in the seventh inning even down seven but even if you don't win the game make David Price grind through this outing here. Try to take something away from what he can get given in a game five out of the bullpen. Torino sat the plate he took Price deep in game one they were teammates in Tampa a couple of years back. Yeah, I think that's uh, 
interesting dynamic I've watched with David Price too. He's, he was so tight with those guys from Tampa and in that organization. The, 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 the uh, Rays have been able to beat up on him a little bit and I think it's because he's so dang nice. You know, they know he's not going to knock me down. I'm going to get in here and swing as hard as I can. Torinos is trying to leave on him. That's something that will come with time as he distances himself from that organization. His former battery mate. Torinos with a base hit into left field. Here comes Odor. He scores the Rangers' second run of the game. It's now 8-2 Toronto, and for the Rangers, their first hit with a runner in scoring position in the last two games. Well, back-to-back -back hits, and Tom, I go directly to your point. You're looking at right now, if you're Texas, we may not win this game, but we're going to knock David Price out of game five. String together at bats, grind it out as if this game was 0-0. Change up. Gets him out front. Nice job by Chirinos to make the adjustment, not get beat. Well, we watch now a couple base hits on David Price's changeup, and you know that's the the, the the pitch that's in jeopardy. Can he come out and throw 95 out of the bullpen after being up in Game Seven, uh, being up the other day in the seventh and eighth inning, and come back today? Yeah, he's got that. But the touch and feel is what goes away when guys are fatigued. And that was a little bit too hard on the changeup. At least that's what I've been able to see uh, with pitchers when they come back on short rest or in this situation like that, what he's doing now. The touch and feel. The Shields all for three. Two outs. Torino's the runner on first after driving in his third run of the series. Jays looking to force a game five. They lead by six. And one thing he's done a good job of, David Price, pounding the strikes on with the lead. Tom, I tell you what, what this is what Monday and uh, game five is on Wednesday. If you're asking me, David Price is out of game five now. You let him finish this one for you. He doesn't come back in two days. No way. Now we try to tell that to David Price. You know, he's game five. He's going to say he's not available. And he does have a very resilient arm. Yeah, so you're saying not even out of the pen, Harold? Yeah, I'm saying not at all. And, and I look at it this way. The Blue Jays, if you're going to go ahead and, and win, I think it's one thing to be in a divisional series, whether you're the Rangers or the Blue Jays. Let me get this clear for fans on both sides. If you're going to win a World Series and in Toronto's place, they're not winning the series unless David Price is able to pitch as a starter. Not just I'm coming back two days last game five. Then that knocks him out of the next round. you got to be able to use your whole roster if you're going to win. Well, Price is gone. Two and a third out of the pen in game four. We head to the eighth in Arlington.
Pleasure make a plan to make it home by Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. And by Mini, the 0 to 15 sales event is happening now. Ready for dinner, Harold? Uh, I'm looking at that, but nah, I'm not ready for that. No? Yeah, that'll tear you up right there. There's Will Venable now in left field for the Rangers. And the fifth pitcher of the day for Texas is the right hander Sam Dyson. He will face the top of the Blue Jays order. Here in the eighth Revere leads off then Donaldson then Bautista. Toronto with an 8 2 lead. Kansas City forcing a game five of the other ALDS. How about this guys the Royals. With that. Four run deficit heading into the eighth inning. The only franchise as Revere shoots one into left center for a base hit. The only franchise in the postseason that has ever trailed by more than four runs heading to the eighth and then came back to win the game, the Blue Jays. They did it twice in 1992. They trailed the Phillies by five in game four of the World Series, and they had also trailed the A's by five in game four of the ALCS. Entering the eighth inning. Came back to win both times, and the Royals with a four run deficit heading into the eighth today. So, a historic comeback by the Royals. Only the Blue Jays have done it in the postseason. Uh, I was watching uh, when we were up in Toronto the playback of that Phillies game. Remember that 15 14, the 93 team, <laughs> Blue Jays in Philadelphia? I remember that game. That was a long night. I'll tell you the thing I remember about that game. Revere goes throw from Torinos. And Revere is in with his second steal of the series. This is what I was talking about before, too, keeping that pressure on all bets off. This is a postseason game. You got to keep going and bury him. What's the difference with Revere? We saw last time he'll dive earlier and the slide. Now he's going to stick the slide and he stays on the back. That's how Ricky Henderson used to slide. Ricky used to come in so hard that as a defender catching the ball you thought he might blow your knees out. You see how he hit Odor right there when Ricky would slide you basically had to spread your legs and let him slide through your legs or else he would knock your knees out from underneath you and you walk away with the with the bruise and they want to challenge this. This is the tough part. I was discussing this earlier with uh, Joe Garaziola and uh, with Randy Marsh, and we were talking about this, and hey, there's nothing the umpires can really do to change it. I know a lot of people are saying, hey, what about the spirit of the rule? Well, what happens if you all of a sudden start saying we're going to pick and choose when we can decide if a guy's on the bag, off the bag? The replay is going to tell you what it is, and their job is to call what they see and make the call accordingly. It was ruled a stolen base on the field, so there must be conclusive evidence to overturn. I think he's safe on this yeah, one. Yeah, you're not going to win that one, but there is no partial, there is no spirit of the rule when it comes to replay. Once we entered this realm, it's a binary world. You're either safe or out. You're either on the base or you're off the base. It takes any judgment away. Now, the difference with Pilar and with Ben Revere's slide, Pilar was off to the side of the bag. Ben Revere went over the bag. So now that gives you more of an opportunity for your whole body to stick. Now the other the other thing you can do is start your slide earlier and maybe stop at the bag. But each dirt surface is different and therefore when you hit and touch you slide further. So Revere ruled safe at second. Remember a review one of the big storylines coming out of game two. The 14 inning game won by the Rangers. So the call is confirmed. Donaldson at the plate. Donaldson, the two run homer back in the first inning. One of three home runs hit by the Blue Jays in the first two innings. Off Texas starter Derek Holland. You, you might. I, I don't know how they solved the sliding. You got to stick your slides. You just do. The guys are going to have to work on it and perfect it. The sliding in baseball has been terrible all season long, watching all the different teams. They've got to figure out that adjustment. 
of how to become better sliders, and you got to practice it. Center field to Shields. One away. Well, Saturday, it's a full day of college football across the Fox Networks, highlighted by West Virginia trying to contain the high-octane offense of the second-ranked Baylor Bears on Fox. Saturday on Fox, FS1, the Big Ten Network, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, let's flip a coin who's the best team in the country right now, but Baylor is very impressive. Ohio State up and down, inconsistent. They're going to stay up there because they won it last year, but... Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting college season and when they come out and pick the when the committee comes out with their listing I'm looking forward to seeing what they how they they rank people big wins by a couple of the teams here in Texas over the weekend It's okay. I know I left you hanging going into my way back machines in 1993 that game at veteran stadium 16 to 13 During the, all that craziness. I remember a sign being held up by a fan in the stands that said will pitch middle relief for food. <laughs> That's how hard it was to find anybody to pitch middle relief and get somebody out. And they took him up on his offer, right? Yeah. One of those boomsticks. Round ball to the shortstop, Andrews. Bautista is retired. Two away, top of the eighth inning, with the Blue Jays leading 8-2. And should they hold on to this lead, Game 5 of the American League Division Series will have it for you on FS1 Wednesday. Coverage beginning at 3 Eastern, and then it will be Game 5, Astros and Royals, 8 Eastern, Wednesday, on FS1. Home teams in the Division Series, 11 and 15 all-time in Game 5. Off the glove of Dyson. And Parnassion is retired. Middle of the eighth here in Arlington. Blue Jays leading by six.
Special caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. Jason Chu leading off for the Rangers here in the bottom of the eighth inning. With the Blue Jays out on top, eight to two. Justin Smoke get at first base, replacing Calabello for Toronto. As Price delivers. One and one on two. Ari Dickey, Blue Jays starter, went four and two thirds. Replaced by Price. Pitching into the eighth. And the arm. Look, he's starting on the grass. He's not in the outfield grass. Look how far he goes to get this ball. And then I thought, no way this is going to be even close. This is Sin Shu Chu who hit this ball that can run. Catches it, is able to spin, and has the arm strength to put something on it where it's actually fairly close. What a play. Great play. You saw the pre-pitch routine reminiscent of Dustin Pedroia jumping to get himself ready as the pitch is being delivered. This conversation right here is a waste of little time. Maybe see if someone can get up in the bullpen and get loose and get ready. They're asking a, a, a lot of David Price now to, to bring it home, basically. John Gibbons clearly made a commitment to David Price regardless of score. It didn't seem as if he was trying to divide innings among games four and five. It was all in right now. And we mentioned earlier, Gibbons told us before the game, if Price gets in today, Marcus Stroman will start game five on Wednesday. Adrian Beltre still in the game in the eighth inning. Are you surprised? Uh, I'm, very, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I was going to say very surprised. I'm a little surprised. Stroman, I, I, I get it. They love the attitude. The stuff was there. But is he on short rest? So you're looking at him on short rest and David Price. I know he had a didn't have the greatest out in game one. But I might have had to reverse the rules here. And Stroman was ready to bring him into this game. But to go. I don't know. I guess the question mark for me Tom is to have David Price when he came in it was seven to one. Yeah, I would definitely watch him very quickly or very closely here because now they're starting to grind out at bats, making him throw a few more pitches, stress him a little more. I'd watch the, the radar gun and I'd watch his body motion, uh, body language. Is he stressing? Is he, how's he feeling? This is more than just a bullpen day now. Once you get in and you're firing in the game situation, adrenaline's flowing, everything else. That's the wear and tear. Price does have a win in the postseason, but that came in relief back in 2008. 0-6 has a starter, including game one of this series. Popped up, shallow right, off the bat of Beltre. And the catch is made by Bautista for out number one here in the bottom of the eighth inning as we head to Los Angeles for a game break with Kevin. All right, thanks, Kevin. It is game three with that series tied at one. Mets and Dodgers also won a piece game three tonight. Swoever a piece man opposite field home run right there swinging it. Prince Fielder up for three. Yeah I don't want to make too much out of this but Rangers need this guy to have a good at bat right here. You know get this guy back to where he wants to be postseason obviously has been rough for him not just this year but across the course of his career. 
Even if you're talking about taking something into game five, better mindset, feel good, square something up. John Daniels, the uh, general manager of the Texas Rangers, I know he'd like to see a good A-B right here too. But it started off so promising. First at bat, I think he got a base hit, didn't he, in, in first game one? Right for the ball in the right center field for a hit. Nope. You guys oh. are scouring back through your books. Hey, it was a hit in my book. <laughs> The first inning ball. of game two. Game two. There we go. All right. It was one of those games. First AB got a hit. His only hit in the series. He's one for 15. And has gone 92 plate appearances in the postseason without driving in a run. It's almost like the effect of Tulowitzki's home run yesterday. You know, he was obviously scuffling. Change up left over the plate. He crushes it out for a three run homer. Makes the whole team feel good. Getting one of your star players back on point. Rangers really need to see that out of fielder to be the threat in the middle of the lineup. One positive was Adrian Beltre did play today. And his last two at bats, he's actually moving better. I, maybe as he played the game, he loosened up a little bit more. I would have had him out under my watch a while back. Yeah, I think you're right. I think his swings as at bats were better. His last two still really does not have the same finish getting his backside through the baseball, but looked a little more comfortable as he went along in this game. Prince's timing was off, and I saw it last night with Strada did a great job of mixing it up, and, and he, has, he hasn't got that rhythm. And that's all. He just misses. He's right in between. And usually when guys are in between, you go through these little slumps that you can prolong it if you battle yourself or if you stay confident that you can get the timing back, you can break out of it fairly quick. But he's in that in-between mode right now. A one-two for the price. Second hit of the series, Chew in at third. Rangers have runners on the corners with one out here in the eighth. And there's an example. He gets a base hit. He's not driving the ball. He missed a couple of balls earlier in that bat, but he was able to get the knock. But here it is. This is the ball. It's just out in front, and he actually has a hook in this and just found a hole. Yeah. Listen, the dinner's going to taste a little bit better just with that base hit. Yeah, you know, buddy. did he barrel it up? No. But he grinded out that at bat to get to a pitch, grinding throughout that at bat against a tough left-handed pitcher. That is something to build on. I think this might be David Price's last hitter right here. Aaron Sanchez and the Blue Jays pen that hit by Fielder ended an 0 for 11 stretch. So the Rangers threatening here in the eighth, trailing by six. Moreland at the plate looking for his first hit of the series. He's 0 for 9. Let's not forget, guys, we had John Gibbons by design start a knuckleball pitcher and bring in a left-hander throwing upper 90s. Think about the difference in the timing. And I talked to Dave Magadan, the hitting coach, the Rangers, about that. He said it's definitely an effect for hitters. It does take a while to adjust, comparing it to seeing Jared Weaver of the Angels and then a hard-throwing bullpen guy comes in behind him. Now you're seeing some better at-bats now, seeing David Price a second time. No, it does take time. And a lot of, lot of times, a knuckleballer will mess up your swing entirely. And watching R.A., that's why I was surprised they took him out so early. With all these young players, the Rangers, that had never seen a knuckleball, he made them look silly. They didn't have good swings. I like the first swing by Moreland in this at bat right here. He tried to get you a three ball real quick on one swing. Even the second one was not bad, but the first one, he's looking to get you three points real quick. And you're right back in. No two from Price. Bounce to the right side. Goins gets the out at first. Coming home is two. It's now a five-run game. And you're playing outs right now if you're, you're the Blue Jays. 
Their infielders were back, not double play depth. They're even deeper because all you're doing is playing out out to the time. And that's why going's not gambling to go to second base. We cut off the lead run or anything like that. You're playing outs and trying to win this game. It's a gutty performance by David Price. Uh, just considering he started a game earlier in the series. He, he was up yesterday twice. Did some stretching exercises in the first inning today. Yeah. The drop parachute into the game in the middle of the game and really looked comfortable from pitch one. Says a lot about his mindset to do anything. Here's first pitch. Base hit center field. Fielder comes home. Throw is cut off. It's a four run game. Moral in that bat, that was it for David Price. With Sanchez hot, ready to go, and you got the right hander coming up. And Andrews, who got the big hit right there. Well, he's been swinging first pitch the entire series and gets on top of this heater. Looks like he broke his back. Sure did. Jeff Bannister is going to go to his bench and force a move by John Gibbons. Chris Stubbs has come out into the on deck circle. Gibbons out to the mound. So that will be all for David Price. Who pitches three innings out of the bullpen and Game four, here comes Aaron Sanchez. First relief appearance since 2010, first of the postseason since 2008. Jeff Bannister sent Drew Stubbs out into the on deck circle. So John Gibbons goes to the bullpen. Aaron Sanchez, who has pitched in every game in this series, has allowed only one hit in three and two thirds innings. Tough matchup here for Stubbs. He does have home run power, but swing and miss guy. It is the nasty power fastball of Aaron Sanchez. And we saw that fastball last night. It was electric. Mm. Tough 
toughest job in baseball pinch hit. Come up swinging. First to bat of the series for Stubbs. He has never faced Sanchez. Andrews, the runner on first. Two runs in the inning for Jeff Bannister's Rangers. This is why the Toronto Blue Jays kept running. You saw Revere steal the bag. You watched uh, Pilar get thrown out still because he slipped past the base. But this ballpark plays like a home run park. It can it is very conducive to scoring a lot of runs. The 0 2 from Sanchez. Stubbs did not go around, says Dale Scott. Yeah, this is big league hardball postseason style. Don't worry about feelings on the other side of the field. Odor on deck. 8 4 Blue Jays. They led 8 to 1. And Stubbs is down on strikes to end the inning. Rangers score two. Price in line for the win. We head to the ninth. Keone Kella out to pitch for the Rangers here in the top of the ninth here in the win in game two. Tell you what, they're within a grand slam tie in the game. So right here, you want them to hold it. You're the Blue Jays, you always want to play for that fifth run so a grand slam doesn't tie you or beat you in a situation in the game. Yeah, agreed. I, I just, again, get back to you see Drew Stubbs. I didn't like the matchup, Sanchez against Stubbs. To me, I'd rather have Venable on Price. I like the matchup better, and I still want to tax David Price. I want him in the game. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm following what you're saying. And I still think with 50 pitches, really not that stressful. 
he will be available for game five. Now, how effective, how far he can go, we don't know. But we'll have spikes on first inning if we get to game five. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, the only thing that brings in a question for me is he threw yesterday twice. But watching Marcus Stroman get up and wing the ball all over the place <laughs> like he's getting ready to come in. Who knows what these guys are used to doing on a daily basis throwing. There is Roberto Osuna. Up and throwing in the Blue Jays pen. She wants to smoke. And he smokes it into right catches made by two. For out number one. After the game, stick around for Fox Sports Live as Jay and Dan bring you live reaction and analysis from here in Arlington, plus a preview of tonight's National League Division Series action between the Mets and the Dodgers in Game Three of their series. Fox Sports Live immediately after our game on FS1. One away. Here's Tulowitzki. 0 for four today. After hitting the three-run home run in the sixth yesterday. Well, H, you make a good point about not just the 50 pitches today, but the work yesterday in the bullpen. Now, two different views of that work. Blue Jays saying, ah, no big deal. He just threw about 18 pitches. Interestingly, Jeff Bannister telling us he had his eye on every pitch David Price threw in the bullpen yesterday. And he said, don't misunderstand. He was getting hot in both the seventh and the eighth innings. And Bannister's vantage point is directly to that bullpen and he's hey, he's looking to see how he's going to manage against David Price. So I, I kind of have a feeling that he was looking a little bit closer maybe than everybody else. He doesn't miss much. And John Gibbons as we mentioned telling us that if Price came into the game today Stroman would start game five. What a story. Not many <laughs> thought Stroman would return this season following the torn ACL and reconstructive knee surgery. While he was rehabbing, he went back to Duke University, earned his degree in sociology. Real cool. Yeah. 4 0, following his return. And he was outstanding in game two of this series. Well, Stulowitzki draws a one out walk. Yeah, and the interesting thing about it is before the postseason was going to start, when the, after the Blue Jays had wrapped it up, the question was who's going to be the number two guy? Is Stroman even going to be the number two man? Right? That was the discussion. Guess what? He's the number one man now with Price pitching in relief tonight. One of the nastiest two seamers in all of baseball, Marcus Stroman. I love his moxie, his attitude, how he carries himself out there, and just when he gets it going, he knows he's got it going. A little flair to him. I like that. Andrews, over the first high throw, double play, six four three. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Odor, Torinos to Shields, do up for the Rangers.
Game four at Arlington, three early home runs off Toronto Blue Jay bats. They lead 8-4, bottom of the ninth. As the Blue Jays look to send the series back north of the border. No team in the postseason has ever erased a four-run deficit in the ninth. Well, 40-year-old R.A. Dickey started the game. The oldest pitcher to make his postseason debut as a starter. And now the youngest player in Major League Baseball will try and close it out. The only Major Leaguer born, Harold and Tom, in 1995, Roberto Osuna. Born the year before R.A. Dickey was drafted. Amazing. What I love about Osuna, you can't tell how old he is when he's out there on the mound. Very calm, such a young guy entrusted with getting the biggest outs of a season. Well, I've always said I'd rather have talent than experience. And he's very talented. These, look at these two. This is a battle of the, the Titans in years to come. Odor, just barely 21 years old. And Osuna, 20. So a combined age of 41. Dickey will turn 41 later this month. Look at you. Great job by our entire crew here at Arlington. Led by our producer Pete Macheska, director Jonathan Evans, associate director Aaron Stoikoff, broadcast associate Jordan Harrison, technical director Paul Harvath, tech manager Craig Marlowe, Dave Corris, Ben Bowler, Wayne Fiddleman crunching the numbers, and Ryan Panitz here in the booth. A one one. And two balls, one strike. Great take there by Odor, trying to find any way to get on base. Very aggressive hitter. Not in this circumstance. Look at how the defense has changed. Remember, they're playing him all shift. He gets that one hit the other way. Look how it's changed and opened up the offense for him. As you described it, a ground ball double. Left field again off the bat of Odor, but it's a fly ball into the glove of Revere for out number one. Back in America. Play of the game. First inning. Two run shot. Josh Donaldson, second batter of the game. And then later in the inning, Chris Colabello. And of the second, Kevin Pillar. Into the glove of David Price in the Blue Jays' pen. Our Bank of America plays of the game. Here's Torino stroking a run his last time up. in the history of the division series which came into play in 95 after division series in 81 and then 14 years later they came back for good only twice has the road team won all five games in a division series wow. Texas Sorry. Rangers in 2010 and the San Francisco Giants in 2012. So we'll see him winning all five. Nice shot of Donaldson there. Usually you talk about the outfields as the sun field. He's probably thinking right now, don't hit to me. Does not have the sunglasses. This kid is so cool. That's what Donaldson's oh looking at goodness. right there. That's what he's blocking. <laughs> It's like a scene out of the natural. Yeah, on the <laughs> corridor down there, they have the openings, you know, because it's big here and spacious that that does shoot down there and it sits on the eyes of the infielders, depending on obviously it's on Donaldson now, but depending on time of day that you're playing, that sun's moving around, that affects you in the infield. We did not have to worry about it in the first two games of the series with the roof closed at Rogers Center. Through. A one two to Torino's two away. Well, I asked this kid, how do you stay so cool on the mound? He said, you know what? I've been doing it my whole life. <laughs> he said, this is baseball, and when I'm on the mound, I don't hear anything. I don't see anything except my catcher living in a very small world, 60 feet, 6 inches long. 
Well, I thought last night when you were talking about his journey. Playing all against, over the world. Playing against everybody. Always older. against the older guys. Everybody's older in the major leagues. Yes. And you know what he does so well? When he's at a lead like this, here's a strike one. It just changes the how the hitter can attack you now. Free and easy, just easy release and gas. Boom. Popping on you. The Blue Jays one strike away from evening this series at two. First inning, Pilar with a home run. So Jose Bautista and the Blue Jays, after losing the first two at home, pick up two huge wins here in Arlington. Blue Jays win game four, eight to four. David Price picks up his second career postseason victory, both coming in relief. Teams will win the first two on the road in a best of five. They've got on to win 93% of the series play. Ari Dickey went four and two thirds in his first postseason start. Well, he did a nice job. He got up to a great start. Tremendous knuckleball working. So despite the return of Adrian Beltre, the Rangers fall short by the score of eight to four. For Harold, Tom, and Ken, this is Kenny. We'll return to Arlington. In just a moment for more post-game coverage, but right now it's time for Fox Sports Live. We send it to Jay and Dan in our Los Angeles studio. Guys.